Hi, eighth graders. This is lesson 6.1, module six, lesson one. So let's look at the spark you're learning for this one because it will help you with the build understanding. So first we're going to we'll look at the um, I can statement. So this the title of this lesson is understand and graph functions. And they say you're supposed to be able to say at the end of this lesson, I can graph a function given a table and identify a function given a table or a graph. So the spark you're learning starts out, Gina is purchasing a mobile device. The graph represents Gina's total cost of owning a device for the first year. What can you interpret about her costs from the graph? So look at this graph, take some time, look at what the um, labels are for each axis. And then also notice they suggest that you use a table possibly and you'll need a pencil. Um, so go ahead and pause and work on this. Think about what you can interpret from looking at the graph. And then we'll come back and look at it together. So hopefully you worked on this on your own a little bit, but let's start here. So they have total costs and here at $100 is where the line begins. So that's interesting. It doesn't start at zero. So that tells you something. And so hopefully you kind of thought about the fact that um, if it's if the initial cost is zero or a hundred, that's probably the cost of the device itself. So cost of device, sorry about that, is one hundred dollars. Um, and then also you can, if you look at, just a minute, I'm going to erase some of this. So that's kind of messy there. Um, we can go back and see that the $100 is the cost for the device. Um, but then also if you look at, so let's look at one. So that's at zero, but if we look at one, that goes lines up with that, which is right in between 100 and 200. So that's an increase of $50. And if we look again at two, that goes to 200, three goes to 250 after three months. So it's an increase of $50 each month. So that tells you something and you could do this on a, in a table if you wanted to make X and Y. And then, you know, you could see that at zero months, it was $100. Um, at one month, it was 150 and so on. So then you can, you'll be able to see that pattern of an increase of $50 each month. Um, and then that's probably enough for now to you might have noticed other things so include those in your examples or in your work um, and then let's go on to the build understanding so now let's look at the build understanding again we have the i can statement here at the top i can graph a function given a table and identify a function given a table or a graph so as we look at the build understanding, I want to look especially at the beginning here at the vocabulary that we have. So there's a lot. Um, let's first look at this relation. A relation is any set of paired input and output values. And we'll look at that um, when we get over here to the tables. You'll see those are input and output values, but We'll look at that more closely there, but that's important. The other thing that's really important is um, the idea of a function. So a function is a relation or it's a rule that assigns exactly one output to each input. So, and we'll look at that again when we go over to the tables that they have set up. So then they also tell you that the set of all possible input values of a function is the domain and the set of all possible output values of a function is the range. So those are important things to remember also. And one thing that you might think about as we're looking at this is um, a lot of times people think of the 
um, the domain is the X coordinate and the range is the Y coordinate if you're thinking of it on in terms of a graph. So let's look at the questions that we have here. Um, Gina's cost rounded to the nearest dollar to operate a mobile device is a function. So that's important to know. So they're telling you that it's going to have exactly one output for each input. You won't have, for example, in month two, two different numbers of texts used or two different outputs for that for that particular month. It'll just be one for each input. Um, Gina's cost accumulates over the number of months she has the account. So months are the input for the function. Since the function's domain is defined by its input, what is the domain of this function and why? So I'm going to have you pause in just a minute. We'll look at all these questions and then you can work on it. Then we'll go through it together. Um, B asks you the total cost is the output of the function, which is the function's range. What is the range of the function and why? C, Gina's plan includes up to 50 free texts in a monthly fee. Does this table show a function? So you're going to look at this table and see if it defines a function. And again, you can go back over here to where we highlighted that a function is a rule that assigns exactly one output to each input. So look at all the inputs and see if there's exactly one for each. Then D, the number of texts for month five is accidentally changed to be the same as for month four. So here's where they're talking about four and five and they have the same output for the input the two different inputs, does the table show a function and explain that? Num uh, e, if the, if, the if the two in month, in the month row is accidentally changed to a one, does that table show a function? So again, for all of these, you wanna go back here and look at these vocabulary, especially function is a rule that assigns exactly one output to each input. So use that definition to help you answer C, D, and E. Um, well, actually all of them, A, B, C, D, and E. So go ahead and pause here and then we'll come back and work on this together. So let's look at A. Gina's cost rounded to the nearest dollar to operate a mobile device is a function. So they tell you that. Gina's cost accumulates over the number of months. So that's important. She has the account. So months are the input for the function. That's really important. Since the function's domain is defined by its input, which is months, what is the domain of this function and why? So they're asking, could it be, um, what could possibly be the input? Could it be um, one half? Could it be negative numbers? So you're thinking about that in terms of overall, what types of numbers would you have? Well, you know it's months. So it would have to be um, whole numbers, zero, one, two, three. So positive numbers, no negative numbers. So the domain would be whole numbers. So she can't have negative numbers or they won't use half a month, they charge per month. Um, um, so it couldn't be negative or decimal or fraction numbers. All right, so let's look at B. The total cost is output of the function, which is the function's range. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so let's look at that. They tell you that that's, so the output is the total cost. And so that's the range. So that's important to think about also. So the cost is based on the month and the different things that she does. Um, what is the range of the function? So let's think about that. So if you look back at the graph from the Spark Your Learning, that'll help you with this one. Um, the total cost you know has to be um, the startup cost 
was 100. So then it goes up in increments of 50. So it would be multiples of 50 greater than or equal to 100 because it wouldn't be just 50. That, that was the cost of the phone was already higher than that. So it would be, um, you could say multiples of 50 um, greater than or equal to or more than 100 because that's where she started. All right, let's look at C. Gina's plan includes up to 50 free texts in the monthly fee. Does this table show a function and explain? So remember, let's go back to what is a function. It's a rule that assigns exactly one output to each input. So if you look at the different inputs, so I'm gonna write so that would be, um, so these are the inputs and these are the outputs. So for every, there's no repeat here. For month one, it's 41. Month two is 26. Three is 32. Those are the texts that she used each month. She may use the same number of texts in a given month that she did before, um, but that's okay. It's just these, none of these inputs can be repeated with the same, with a different output. So for that one, yes, that's a function because each month is paired with a single output value for the text use. So, um, and you could say because, and just use the definition of a function. It, it There is one, is exactly one output output for each input. All right, so let's look at D. The number of texts for month five is accidentally changed to be the same as for month four. Does the table show a function and explain? So there's still, that still is a function because each month, again, is paired with a single output value. The output values can be the same, and so it's still a function. So yes, each um, month or input is still paired with one output. And then E, if the two in month in the month row is accidentally changed to a one, does the table show a function? So now you have in month one, they say 41 and then also 26. So that's impossible. You can't have two different numbers of texts shown in the same month. So now no, this is no longer a function. Um, and you can do different things. There's... Um, one of the input values is paired with two output values. Two different output values. So then I would also encourage you to do the turn and talk, explain in your own words the difference between a function and a relation. That'll just get you thinking about it even more. So hopefully this helps and you'll be able to go on and do the um, step it out and the on your own. And then I'll see you in lesson two.